Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the second Thursday of Easter. The church today remembers St. Marcellinus of Gaul. He was the first bishop of Embrun from 354 AD. He was a native of Africa. He went to Rome with two other bishops of North Africa, Vincent and Dominique, to attend the 1313 Synod to judge the Donatist movement. They met the Pope, Mil Miltides, and from him received a mission where they then went to Nice, where they landed, after taking advice of the bishops assembled in Arles in 314. They then went and preached the gospel to the inhabitants of the Italian side of the Alps, from the shores of the sea to Vercelli, where Eusebius was chosen as bishop, and where they then separated. Marcellus and his two disciples then headed towards the Alps and arrived in Embrun. As the main missionaries evangelizing the regions, they became then the first bishops. Marcellinus became the first bishop of Embrun and Vincent, the bishop of Digne. So St. Marcellinus of Gaul, for your founding of the Diocese of Embrun and spreading the faith through the Alps, we ask you to please, please pray for us today. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so by following your holy will we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us take a moment and confess our sins to God in ways that we have failed him and our neighbor in thought, word, deed, and omission, so that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience. Say together the second form of the Confidior found on page 66. I confess to Almighty God in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, and what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. For your penance, I would ask you to do an act of kindness for someone else sometime in the next couple of days. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you. And with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I waited, waited for the Lord who bent down and heard my cry, drew me out of the pit of destruction, out of the mud of the swamp, and set my feet upon rock, steadied my steps. Alleluia. And put a new song in my mouth, a hymn to our God. Many shall look on in awe, and they shall trust in the Lord. Alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you redeemed us through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Grant that we may benefit from the graces merited by our Savior. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. 
When the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they became infuriated and wanted to put them to death. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, the Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit, he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man, but out of them all, the Lord delivers him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen, but still believe. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. May Almighty God cleanse my heart and my lips. I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of earthly things. But the one who comes from heavens is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever does accept his testimony certifies that God is trustworthy. For the one whom God sent speaks the words of God. He does not ration his gift of the Spirit. The Father loves the Son and has given everything over to him. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. But whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God remains upon him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we come upon our final daily mass of the week before the Saturday vigil, we find ourselves again with Peter and the apostles in Acts. And they are brought again before the Sanhedrin where they are standing trial. And of course, the Sanhedrin told them to not preach about Jesus anymore. But they said, we must obey God rather than men. My brothers and sisters, how many of us can willingly, truly say we obey God rather than men? I just leave that to you for your own thoughts. Because... God says, you shall not kill. God says, you shall not commit adultery. God says, honor your father and your mother. God says, you shall not covet your neighbor's goods or wife. God says, to love him above all things and your neighbor as yourself. Do we obey God or do we obey man? 
where man says, do as you please. Life is short. Obey the powers that be, no matter what they say. Brothers and sisters, boils down to, who do we serve? Do we serve God? Or do we serve other human beings? Some with a very sinister end to their actions. Yes, life is short. But eternity, my brothers and sisters, is very, very long. So it only makes sense that we should concentrate on our eternal life rather than our short span of time here. What is a little suffering here, be it even for decades, or an eternity, an eternity of happiness and peace with our Lord? Or what is the payoff for comfort here, for an easy life here, and eternity of pain and suffering like we cannot even imagine in this realm. For our Lord himself says, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God remains upon him. The wrath of God is eternal separation. At time, for eternity, is Satan, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him, so the choice, as I always say, is ours. Whom do we serve? Whom do we love? Whom do we obey? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now turn to page 71, if you're following along, and say together the creed that unites us as Christians. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man for our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. God is the Father of all mercies. In him we place our trust as we offer our prayers and petitions. Our response is, Alleluia. That this week the church will rededicate herself to a living and proclaiming Christ's mercy. We pray to the Lord. Alleluia. For peace, that Christ's victory over death may bring an end to war, violence, and suffering in our world. We pray to the Lord. Alleluia. For blessings on all medical personnel, that they may receive strength and guidance from God and continue to use their skills to bring hope, healing, and wholeness to those in their care. We pray to the Lord, Alleluia. For the sick and their caregivers, especially those on our parish prayer list, that they may trust in God's continuing love and presence, we pray to the Lord, Alleluia. For all of those affected by the storms yesterday and today and that are coming here today, that all may be protected from any and all harm, physical and spiritual, we pray to the Lord, Alleluia. For all of the intentions we hold deep in the silence of our hearts. For Father Tom Sheha, whose funeral is tomorrow. Also for other priests who have passed, including 
Father Christopher Smith, Father Robert Yates, and Father Walter Bly, that they, their souls may rest in eternal beatitude with our Lord. We pray to the Lord. Alleluia. For all those who have died and who will die today, that the Lord in his mercy may welcome them into his dwelling, we pray to the Lord. Alleluia. Loving Father, we need your mercy. As you answer our prayers, spoken and unspoken, fill us with the joy that comes from hope and grant us the life that conquers death. We ask this, our, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, I will present my thank offerings to you, for you have delivered me from death and my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. May it become for us the bread of life. For the mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, may it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice, which we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Receive this offering, most holy trinity, which we make in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name, our good, and for the benefit of his holy church. Lord our God, accept the offerings of your rejoicing church, which you have enlivened this day, and grant us the gift of perpetual gladness, for you have given us cause for great joy. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, especially at this time when he became our paschal sacrifice. He is the true Lamb who took away the sins of the world. Through his death, he conquered death for us, and by his wondrous resurrection, he restored eternal life to us. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The holy sacrifice of the Mass continues with Eucharistic Prayer 2, which is found on page 82 if you're following along. We have thanks to you, God our Father, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, whom in these last days you have sent us as Savior, Redeemer, and Messenger of your will. He is your word inseparable from you. Through him you have made all things, and in him you were well pleased. He sent him from heaven to a virgin's womb. There he dwelt and was made flesh. He was revealed as your Son, born through the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin. When he suffered, he fulfilled your will and gained for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands to free from suffering those who believed in you. When he was betrayed to his freely chosen suffering, 
thereby to destroy death, to break the chains of darkness, to crush hell beneath his feet, to give light to the just, to make a covenant, and to manifest his resurrection. He took bread, he gave you thanks, and he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In like manner, he took the cup and said, This is my blood, which is poured out for you. Whenever you do this, do it in memory of me. Together, calling then his death and resurrection to mind, we offer you the bread and the cup. We thank you for allowing us to come before you and to serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church to gather all in unity. Grant to all who partake of these holy mysteries the fullness of the Holy Spirit for the strengthening of their faith in the truth. So may we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him may glory and honor be yours with the Holy Spirit in your holy church now and forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say it with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Let us say together the second communion prayer found on page 98 if you're following along. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation. Who I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness, may it become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Please join me now in the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you 
may I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, may I possess with a pure heart that which I have taken as food. May the gift I have received bring me healing and strength now and forever. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open the, your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. Alleluia. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, to you belong the keys of life and death by the will of the Father. Preserve us through these holy mysteries that our redemption may be assured and our doubts relieved. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Please join me now in the prayer of St. Michael. Holy Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join me now in a prayer for peace with the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me so love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there's despair, hope. Where there's darkness, light. And where there's sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you for joining us today and this week for our daily Mass. Pray that you can join us on... Saturday night at 5 p.m. for our vigil here, or on Sunday at 9 a.m., both Central Daylight Time. And that will be for the third Sunday of Easter. We pray that you have a wonderful day, a wonderful rest of the week. Stay safe, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, remain in a state of grace. Fight evil wherever you find it, spread joy wherever you go. And if you find it in your heart and want to click on the provided secure donation link, we would appreciate anything that you can give us to help us continue our daily Mass ministry. Alleluia, sing to Jesus, his the scepter, his the throne. Alleluia, his the triumph, his the victory alone. Hark the songs of peaceful Zion, thunder like a mighty flood. Jesus, out of every nation, has redeemed us by his blood.